tonight. Before we dismiss the kids, we have uh, one bit of church business to handle for you this morning, and it relates to a deacon installation here. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to formally install somebody as a deacon at this church. Uh, the New Testament describes a unique role of servant leadership called the deacon role. And it's a, a very unique role because it sits in a layer between the elders of a church and the body as a whole. And it's a very important role because the deacons are involved with the body, serving in different capacities in, in the church, but they also interact with the elders of the church and they keep the elders informed as to how things are running in the church. And this role became very clear and the need for this became very clear in the early church and you see it in Acts chapter six. What happened was the elders of the church were serving very well in the church, but their service in the church kept them from doing the most important thing, and that was ministering to the body with the word and with prayer. And so the solution was to appoint a number of godly men who could perform the tasks that the elders were performing and free them up for the task of leading the church. Uh, the New Testament spells out qualifications for this role. Uh, they're very important. They're very similar to the elder qualifications. And I want to read them for you this morning. Uh, it's found in 1 Timothy chapter 3. And I'm going to read verses 8 through 12. Deacons, likewise, must be men of godly, of dignity, not double-tongued or addicted to much wine or fond of storied gain, but holding to the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience. These men must also first be tested and then let them serve as deacons if they are beyond reproach. Women must likewise be dignified, not malicious gossips, but temperate, faithful in all things. Deacons must be husbands of only one wife and good managers of their children and their own households. So the scripture is clear on the requirements for what a man must be, what must be true in a man's life in increasing measure if he is to be a deacon in a church, to serve in the capacity of a deacon. There is some freedom with a deacon service that relates to the duration of the service of a deacon. And uh, here at Grace Bible Church, we have three uh, primary criteria we use for the duration of service of someone who serves in a deacon role. And the first is that it, that role exists as long as the, the, de uh, the elders feel like there is a need for that role here at this church. And some of those deacon roles are ongoing roles that, that go on for a long time and they don't really have an end point. And uh, other roles are roles that are more time bound in their nature. An example of a, a role that's more of an ongoing role is a deacon over uh, Next Generation Ministries. That's a, a ministry that's going to be going on in an on basis, ongoing basis here at this church. Uh, but there are other deacon roles that are more time bound. And an example of that was uh, we, before we found this church, we enlisted the help of a man who would actually go about the process in the real estate sector of finding this building for us. And once that building was found for us and we moved in, uh, the need for that service came to an end. So his role as deacon came to an end. So the deacon role uh, exists for as long as the elders see the need for it. Uh, it also exists as long as it's an appropriate season of life for that man to be serving in that role. We want to make sure we evaluate the man's season of life and all of those other things, maybe his workload or his health or other things. And we want to make sure that that works for the, the man as well. And the man also serves in that role as long as he's qualified in that role. And I just read the passage that outlines that. Um, a few weeks ago, we presented Mike Jones to you. Uh, Mike will be serving in the role of deacon over two things. Uh, one is over small groups, and the other is over the website development and maintenance here at this church. And um, Mike has been serving for a long time in that capacity. Uh, he's been serving in increasing regularity and in, in leadership of his small group in the Eric Martin small group. And uh, he's also been running the church website for a very long time. But what we're doing today is um, we're not really changing Mike's activities that he's going to be doing, but we're installing Mike as a deacon of that. And it's a sober meeting and it's a sober occasion today, not because uh, we're just checking a box, but what we want to do is, is help you understand that Mike is actually entering into serving in those roles as a deacon now. Um, he's been serving in those areas for a long time, but today he's going to be beginning his service in those areas as a deacon, and he's going to be meeting the qualifications that are outlined here. So it's a, a significant uh, occasion today. Both of these areas are, are very critical to the role of this church. Um, we have enough people in this church that we have more small groups than we have elders to lead those small groups. So it's imperative that we have men in this church who are qualified to lead those small groups alongside the elders. And Mike is one of those men who's taking an increasingly active role of leadership in his small group. As it relates to the website, that's very important as well. You all know what constitutes a good website. It's a website that, that has information that's very helpful, but it's information that's very usable and very accessible. 
And uh, that's not a small task. Uh, a website is something that you don't really think about as you use it, if it's working well, but when it doesn't work very well, that's when you notice it. We all know that. Um, but it takes a lot of manpower to design that website and architect it, and then to maintain it as well. And, and Mike has been doing that selflessly with quiet, silent, invisible excellence for a very, very long time. And the elders are very thankful for Mike's service in both of those areas. Now, there's a process by which a man becomes an elder at Grace Bible Church, and I just want to walk you through it so that you can understand uh, the way in which we approach this uh, level of service at the church. Uh, the first thing we do is we give an application to the man. It's a man we've been watching for quite a while, and we see his abilities, we see his natural gifting, we see his desire to, to serve in the church, so we give him a deacon application. And it's an application that has two parts to it. And the first part is a part in which he examines himself theologically. And there's a series of questions where he explains his understanding of several different areas of, of biblical theology. And the second area is an area where Mike evaluates himself. Uh, the applicant evaluates himself on the different qualifications for becoming a deacon, but it's also important to know that the man's wife in, evaluates him as well. All of that information is collected and given to the elders, and we received that from Mike. We read it through, and we were satisfied that it was, it was worthy of going forward, and uh, so we did. So we met with Mike individually, and we talked with Mike. Uh, Mike sat with all of us, and then we met with Mike and his wife to talk and make sure that this was a season of life that worked not only for Mike, but it worked for his whole household. And uh, what we did was then we put Mike before the body because we understand that we know Mike well, but we know that others of you might know him in ways that we don't. And we wanted to hear from you, things that would help us and inform us as we make our decision. And it was our joy to know that, that nothing came forward to us that, that uh, caused us to have any kind of pause on this process of Mike becoming a deacon here at this church. So we are very satisfied with the kind of man that Mike is. We're satisfied with the way that he leads his house, his household, and his home. We're very thankful for that. So what I want to do now is I want to install Mike as a deacon here at this church. So if I could have Mike and his wife, Adrian, and their kids come up, I'd like to pray for them. And I also need all of the elders who are here this morning to come up and lay hands on Mike, and I will pray for them. There we go. All right. It is our joy to do this. This is a, an essential step in the significant function of this church. So men gather around and I will pray for Mike and then we will dismiss. Father in heaven, I thank you for your wisdom, your wisdom that you design roles within the church and you give us guidelines and qualifications that must be met for people to function in those roles. Lord, I thank you first for the work that you did to save Mike, to draw him into a saving relationship with you and give him a heart of love for you. And Lord, it's so clear that you saved Mike uh, by the way in which he loves to serve in the body of Christ, the body that he himself is a part of. Uh, Lord, and for a very long time, we've seen the blessing and the fruit of that service here at this church. And I thank you, Lord, in your kindness and your goodness for bringing Mike to us. I thank you, Lord, for all of the ways in which he serves at this church and does so quietly and with excellence day after day, week after week. What a blessing. Lord, I thank you for Mike and his family and the way that he leads his family. I thank you for his leadership over his wife and his kids. And Lord, that he leads a, a stable, happy, content family. And he is exemplary among the men in this church on how to do that. I thank you for that. Father, I pray for him as he continues to function in the roles that he has now in the role of deacon. I pray, Lord, that you would attend to him and grant him the grace that he needs to continue to serve you with the same heart of love he has and devotion. I pray for us as a church, Lord, that we would pray for him faithfully. We would pray for his wife. We would pray for his household. Lord God, that you would sustain him as he has these levels of responsibility within this church. Lord, it is our privilege to be here in this church. It is our privilege to come together as a body and worship you. I thank you, Lord, for your design on how that is to take place. We love you and we praise you in Christ's name. Amen.